Let's discuss updating the fuel pressure regulator on the 6 liter power stroke diesel engine. Now this may also be commonly referred to as the blue spring kit. You'll notice that there is a blue spring in this kit here. And what we're going to do is replace this and this is going to up our fuel pressure by 12 to 15 psi from about 45 to 60 psi. And so in order to do that we have to remove the charge air cooler uh, tubing out of the way. I'm going to remove the air cleaner assembly. That'll give us good access to the fuel filter housing in which this assembly is mounted to. So let's get started and get some of the stuff out of our way. All right, now you can see we've got our charge air cooler tube out of here. We've got our air cleaner out of the way. So it really opens up to get to the housing in which we need to work on here. I've also done one extra step and taken my pry bar and I've wedged it below the fuel line and tucked it underneath the negative battery cable here. And what that's done is put the upper radiator hose out of the way. Now you could choose to remove the upper radiator hose, but you're gonna have a little bit more of a mess with some coolant spilling. So what we've done here is tucked it down. Gotta be careful not to pinch it off by the housing here, but that's got it out of our way. Okay, now we've got everything out of the way. You can see we've got the zip tie on the fuel line here. What that's gonna do is hold this fitting from falling all the way down once I break this loose. So I'm gonna take my 13 16 end wrench and break this line loose, thread this off, and you'll see that zip tie holds it kind of in place. Now I'll also take a couple shop rags and tuck them underneath here, just so any fuel that spills doesn't get too far down underneath the engine. We're gonna get a little more fuel once I pull these bolts out. One other thing I wanna do right now is take a 7 8 end wrench and get this fitting out of here. We're gonna transfer that over to our new housing when we install the new one. If you don't do it right now, we're gonna have to put this unit in the vise and transfer it later on. So let's do that while it's still mounted to the vehicle. And then we'll remove these four bolts and get this housing off of here. Now I'm gonna take my T25 Torx bit with a ratchet and remove these four bolts and the housing will be ready to come off. Okay, we'll get our last bolt out and we'll remove the housing, lay it off to the side. And you can see we've also got this gasket here. Now this commonly dries out and starts to leak. We've got a new one with our kit so we can discard that. We've got the old spring and the seat here which we'll remove as well as an o-ring and we'll also get this little piece off the top here. I'm going to need a needle nose pliers or maybe a pick to pull that stuff out. Now I'm going to take my pick and try and dig this top piece out. Now that's come out. See we're leaking a lot more fuel here and so I can remove this lower seat as well. We're dumping a little more fuel out as well as this other piece in here. We're going to dig that out and replace that all with the components that came in our kit. Okay, so we've got our new top piece here. I'm going to lubricate the O-ring with a little bit of fuel here, help that slide in a little bit better. So now I'm going to orient that properly and we will get that in the right location and simply pop it in place. Now we'll finish it off with a blunt object like the handle just to make sure it's seated properly in there. Then we'll take our lower pieces, install those in here. Once those pieces are in place, we'll take our new housing, we'll take our seal, install the seal into the new housing, and we will work it back on. Now our kit comes with four new bolts, we'll use those as well. So let's go ahead and install that, get those snugged up, and then we'll reinstall the fitting on the end here with the new O-rings that came with the kit as well. Well now we've got our new housing mounted to the fuel filter housing. We have to install this fitting in our new housing. Now there's a couple O-rings here 
in which we want to replace. So I'm going to use my pick to get this large o-ring off and then you'll notice in the face of this fitting there's another o-ring recessed in there as well. So again use the pick to help roll that out of there. And now our new kit comes with two brand new o-rings. So first off we'll install the new o-ring on the end here. We'll gently roll that into place. And then this other one Use a little bit of diesel fuel again to lubricate it and we'll gently roll it over the threads here. We don't want to cut it, but now we've got that on. And so we'll again make sure these are good and lubricated and we'll thread this into our new housing. Well now we've got our fitting installed here. I've gone ahead and started the line and got it on finger tight. I'm going to take my 13 16 end wrench again and we'll go ahead and get that tightened up pretty well. I'll remove my rags, make sure that We've got the area clean, free of any debris or drips that may have come off when we were doing the job. And so now we're going to go ahead and turn the key to the run position and prime the system and make sure that we've got no leaks here before we go ahead and install the rest of it. We might have to cycle the key a couple times, so we're going to have to refill the fuel bowl here. And then we want to make sure that there's no leaks. Once that's done, we'll reassemble the engine and start it up and our fuel pressure should now be 12 to 15 psi higher than it was previously. This is going to help ensure longevity of the injectors and also have a little bit of an improvement on drivability. So now you've seen the process and hopefully you understand how to do it yourself when you want to replace the fuel pressure regulator on your Ford 6 liter power stroke diesel engine.